We thank you for everything, Lord, that you will do. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. Let me, let me, let me also make, uh, let me put a plug in for the men's retreat. Amen. Man, if, if you haven't signed up for the men's retreat, if you haven't been to a men's retreat, you need to sign up, man. You, you will be blessed. Uh, I'm telling you, it, 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 is, uh, it is good. Are you going? Amen. It's going to be good. You going, Rico? Uh, let's go, brother. Let's go. You know, we need to keep them in prayer. Uh, I don't know. I heard the, that, that there was it your house? Your house caught fire? Amen. And uh, do you, did, what, you, did you lose your furniture and everything or what? Okay. So if anybody can uh, listen, uh, if we have furniture, uh, appliances, whatever, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll get those to him. Amen. Well, we want to be a part of helping him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Clothes, whatever, you know. No, 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 no. Give us money. We'll, we'll give it to him so he can buy clothes. Because we don't want no secondhand clothes. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to go with me in your Bible this morning. To, to the book of Psalms. And, and I, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna say, say this to you this morning. There is a new season. This Amen. is, we are in a new season right now. God, God is moving. Listen, I don't know if you feel it or sense it. I, I do. There is something happening in the spirit realm right now. Uh, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in the impossible. Uh, you know, you may not be, I don't know, but I am. Uh, we've had so many miracles in our family, in our brothers and sisters and our family. We've, we've had so many miracles, I mean miracles. And God, God has, has given us powerful, powerful miracles. And... Uh, so, so we know, we, we, we know his power. We, we, know, we know that there is nothing impossible for God. Amen. All right? Now, now, let me say this to you before we get into the word of God. If, if you're not saved, if you do not know Jesus Christ, you, you, you got to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you, if you want to plug in to the source of all life, if you want God to, to do the impossible, you got to be a part of who he is. You, you can't, I, I meet with people all the time, and I, I meet people that want everything God has, but they don't want him. And, and it's impossible. You you gotta you gotta you got to know Jesus as your Savior, your Lord. That's the greatest miracle of life. It's, it's to know a God that can extend his hand into a heart because he's the only one that can do it, that can put his hand into a life and and change that life. No one else can do it. I'm I'm telling you, he's the only one. He's the only one. And, and so you, you, you need to know him. If, if you don't, it's impossible for you to believe in a God you don't know. It's impossible for you to, to believe in a God that you just don't know. You, you got to know him. And uh, you got to know him, not just believe he exists, but to know him and experience him, you, you got to be able to do that. Amen. And so this morning we're going, before we leave here, we're going to give you the opportunity to find Christ, to, to let him into your life. 
That, that's, that's the greatest miracle there is, is the miracle of life. That's what he came to die on the cross for, to become your Lord. Amen. And so without that, it's impossible for you to, to plug into everything he asked for you. Because you can't be plugged into the natural world, to everything the world has to offer you, and still want to plug into the, the source of God. Amen. In Psalms 78, I use this psalm all the time when I dedicate children. And this psalm is so powerful because the psalmist, when he writes it, they're instructed by the Holy Spirit, is writing it, uh, instructing the fathers as we, as, we, as we read that, as we begin to see in the beginning, he's writing it there, instructing fathers to, to, to declare it to their children, to let them see what happened, uh, what God did, the, the powerful things that God did in, in, for Israel when they were in Egypt. Uh, the, the, the way he brought them out, the way he delivered them. But, but there, were, there, were, there were problems. There were things that took place uh, with, with the Israelites. And he writes it down in, in, in the book of Psalm 78. He writes it down. And he writes it down for a reason because he wants you and I to understand that we're no different than they were. It can happen to us and we can miss what God has for us. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss anything God has for me. I believe that God has powerful things for each and every one of you. I believe that God has great and mighty things for every one of you. And, and you've got to desire to want those things. And there are certain things you've got to do in order to have those things. Amen. And the children of Israel... They just, they just could not change. Listen to me. They were slaves for 400 years, 430 years. They were slaves in the land of Egypt. And, and when they came out of Egypt, amen, they, the Lord had delivered them. I mean, brought them out, delivered them from Egypt to, to, to bless them. He didn't, he didn't bring them out to, to let them suffer and curse them and kill them and and, and all, he didn't do that. He brought them out to bless them. He says, I'm going to take you to a land filled with milk and honey. He says, a land you never toiled for. A land that you never built. Homes you never built. Lands you never toiled to cultivate. He said, fruit you never, you never planted. And I mean, when they went in there to investigate the land, they brought fruit that was... So big, it took one cluster of grapes, it took two men to carry. I mean, imagine, uh, today, a little baby can carry a cluster of grapes, a whole patch of grapes, all right? But, but imagine the, 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 the blessing that God wanted to give them, all right? But they, they didn't understand they, 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 their mentality. Listen to me. Their mindset was still in slavery. They, they, they were still slaves to themselves. They weren't in Egypt, but they were still thinking like slaves. And when you think like a slave, you talk like a slave. When you think like a slave, you're going to talk like a slave. Are you with me? Enslaved to disease, enslaved to poverty, enslaved to trouble, enslaved to all kinds of stuff. And all we do is talk about that. We're enslaved to it. Haven't you ever, haven't you ever noticed when you call your friend that the first the conversation that comes out of their mouth is the same conversation you talked to her about last week? <laughs> slavery. It's all slavery. Bondage. 
Hello. Amen. He brought them out to change them. To bless them. Now, now, now I want you to understand something. He didn't bring you out of darkness to curse you. Amen. He brought you out of darkness to bless you. Amen. And if you're going to give him praise, give him a big praise. Turn up my mic. Put my mic up. <clears throat> I don't want to be yelling so loud. He, he, did, he didn't bring you out to curse you. We do a good job of that. And, and he's been trying to get us to change. To, 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 to see things the way he sees them. Not, not the way you see them, because you see with dim eyes. He sees clearly. Imagine how powerful God is. The Lord, the Lord if, if you get a chance when you go home, we're not going there today. But when you go home, read Psalms 139 when you get home. And you're going to find that God, God is so powerful. He, he, he sees your future your, 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 everything. You, you, every, no matter where you're at, he's there. He knows your thoughts before you think them. He, every, everything about you, he, he's already ahead of you. Amen. He's been there before you were even there. Anybody home? Some, some of us are enslaved. To, 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 to a marriage that's falling apart and God wants to heal that marriage. God wants to heal that, that husband, heal that wife, and, and we're enslaved to the way we're thinking. And, and you need to know that the devil's a liar. Don't, don't just tell me yes and then get out of here and talk the way you've been talking. Because we kill what God's trying to do. We destroy what God is trying to do for us. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? You know, I, I remember, listen, I remember when I first got saved. Uh, man, I learned so many times I wish I could just go back to those days. And, 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 and uh, those were my honeymoon days. How many know you? Everybody has a honeymoon with Jesus. Amen. Man, those days are powerful. The honeymoon stage. He's he's courting you. You want a candy bar? She floats to you like a commercial. <laughs> My God, just like the commercial almost. But, but I remember, I remember, I remember that there, there was no, no negative thought. You know, I needed a job, but I didn't even know we were in a recession back in the 70s, the early 70s. I didn't know we were, we were in bad trouble. I didn't know nothing about all that. All, all I knew that was before I got saved, I was so loaded day and night that I didn't care if the world fell off, floated away in space or whatever. And then when I got saved, I didn't know anything about recessions or anything like that. That was the farthest thing from my mind. I didn't know about any of that. But when I needed a job, and all I could say is, God is going to give me a job. God is going to give me a job. And, and, and when I'd go someplace and they, and they wouldn't hire me, I said, this isn't the place. And God, and, and listen, God always came through. Amen. Yeah. All right, you know why? Because, because I was no longer a slave. I was free. All right, so, so I want you to read with me. I want you to see the mistake that, that they made. In, in the, the children of Israel, can you imagine? They, they missed it royal. Okay? They missed it big time. 
just like many of us here miss it. Some of you come to church, you know, hoping maybe maybe the Lord will drop by and, and slap you or something, and and the, and the blessing will hit you bad in, and. And and, 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 and and it's already yours. It's already yours. You, you, you just don't understand it. You just, you just don't know how to get it. You just don't know how to obtain it. And look, 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 this was the mistake that the children of Israel made in the desert. Let's go to verse 19. Amen. 19 to verse 22. And, and I want them to put it up there for me. Amen. Because uh, I use the Amplified, and I want you to read it with me in the Amplified. The Amplified gives you a deeper meaning. And, and I want to read it for you there. Then we're going to go to the, uh, I'll read it to you from here, from the new century. And they said, yes, they spoke against who? They spoke against God. It says, they spoke against God. They said, can God furnish the food for a table in the wilderness? Behold, he did smite the rock so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. But can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger mounted up against Israel. Because in God... They believed not, they relied not on him, they adhered not to him, and they trusted not in his salvation, his power to save. They didn't they did trust him, they didn't rely on him. Are you with me? Anybody home? They, they, they spoke, do you, well, I don't know, what are we going to do? How are we going to pay this bill? How, how, how are we going to, how are we going to, Get by with this. How are we going to do that? And and and, uh, our, our, and God's and listen, the Holy Spirit is a private listener in every conversation. Yeah. He's right there, hearing you. You say, "Wow, I'm right here, wanted to help you, but you won't let me." I want to do the impossible for you. But, but you just won't, won't let me. Look, look, look what it says here. It, the, way, the, the New Century Version reads that. He says, Then they spoke against God, saying, Can God prepare food in the desert? When they hit the rock, water poured out, and rivers flowed, out, flowed down. But, but can He give us bread also? Will he provide his people with meat? When the Lord heard them, he was very angry. His anger was like fire to the people of Jacob. His anger grew against the people of Israel. They had not believed God. You know what they thought? They thought, well, I, well, I know, I know, I know that I, 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 I asked the Lord to come into my life, but, but, do, do you think that God is greater than that? How, how many here believe that God is greater than anything in life? He is. He is. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater than anything in life. You know, back in the 60s, back in the 60s, when when in the early 60s, when I started using drugs, way back in the early 60s, they used to have a saying. They said, once a junkie, always a junkie. You're going to die a junkie. That's what they said. Okay? And believe me, a lot of people did die. Because you know what? They believed the lie. There was no hope in that. Is there anybody home? But, but during the years, drug addicts began to get set free. Jesus began to deliver them, break that habit off of them. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, 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 and check this out. It was impossible scientifically, medically, it was impossible. The, 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 listen, that's why, they, that's why they tell you today, listen to me, that's why they tell you today, amen, that you're a recovering. They don't say you're free. They say you're still recovering because scientifically and medically, they don't believe you'll ever be delivered. But by the blood of Jesus, listen to me, you are free. Oh, give him praise. Lift up the mighty name of Jesus. There, there's no one greater. No one Amen. greater. I'm telling you this morning, there's no one greater than our God. There's no, nothing He cannot do. There's nothing He cannot do. I'm telling you this morning. He, there's no problem he cannot solve. There's nothing he cannot do. But you and I, listen to me. Our problem, our problem is that we're like the children of Israel. The problem comes and immediately our emotions and our, our, and our, and our mindset kick in. And fear grips us somehow and we begin to talk crazy. What are we going to do with this? What's going to happen? What, what, what's going to go on with that? What, and, and, and you know what? The human mind is, is so heavy duty, listen to me, that we always think the worst. Well, let me come on this side. These people here like me. We, we are always thinking the worst. And because we think the worst, we speak the worst. Amen. We're always talking the worst. And because we talk the worst, we get the worst. We open the door for the enemy to hit us. Constantly. Is there, is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here? So, so you've you got to say this with me this morning. You've got to say, this is going to change. Now say this to me. No, no, that's wrong. Say it with me. I'm going to change. Oh, give him a big praise. Give him a big praise. Give him a big praise. I, I didn't tell Yvette this. I didn't tell Yvette this the other night. I, I saw her brother. I told her I saw her brother, but I didn't tell her this. Where's she at? I didn't tell her this. I saw her brother. I was preaching in Pueblo the other night. And uh, her brother came over here one day. He had 1,600 pounds of steel fall on his leg. And they were going to amputate his leg because it, all his veins, his blood vessels, everything were crushed. And he came over here. We prayed for him right there. And we, we commanded life to come into those veins. Yeah. Now, now look, look up here at me. To some people... It sounds foolish because, listen to me, our mentality is in slavery. Come on. See, we, 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 we look at that and we say, oh, no, just, just take him over there. <laughs> but he came. And listen, to, we're praying for him right here. And as we're praying for him right here, Something just went right through him, through that leg. Like air just blew that, that leg up. Just, whew. Is there anybody home? So, so 
so then I, I kept inquiring. I says, I kept inquiring. I says, I says, I want to find out wh- how he's doing. Well, I called him, and he had been out there hunting. He was hunting. He was doing all kinds of stuff, hunting, okay? And, and, and he walked on that leg all through the hunting up and down hills and everything and all that. And, and, and his leg was still hurting a little bit, all right? But he went to, back to the doctor, and the doctor said, we're not going to cut that leg. Don't, don't you think, listen, don't you think that the God that created the body is big enough to, to do whatever he wants? Yes. Let, let me come on this side. Don't you think that the God that create, created the body can do whatever he wants? So, 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 so look at this. He, he went, but he said he still had pain on that leg. I saw him walk in the other night. He was still limping, okay? He, he still had pain, but they were not going to cut it off. But he went up to the altar the other night. And, and I, I put my hand on him in the name of Jesus, spoke to that leg. And listen, he went down. And when he got up, he said, I felt something leave. Give him praise. Don't don't you think that him, the Lord, the God, the creator of everything that exists, everything, don't you think he can help you with your bills? Don't you think he can bring prosperity to your life? Oh, come on. I was going to tell Pastor Eddie, tell these guys who gave you the $100 so they can all go stand by him. Uh, Imagine, imagine. Don't you think he wants to prosper you? He does, he does, he does. He, He does, he wants to prosper you. He wants to elevate you. This is a new season. This is a brand new season. But what the devil meant for evil, the Lord's going to turn it around. Is anybody home? Oh, I don't know about you. Those of you that have, how many of you got some problems this morning? You, you, got, you got some problems. You got husband problems, children problems, financial problems, health problems, all kinds of problems. And you've been talking crazy. Well, I don't know. Man, I don't, Advil, give me some more. Give me some more. <laughs> you know, you've been talking all kinds of crazy stuff. You know what? Let me tell you something. I was in a, in a car accident. Me and Richard. Richard's not in here. Me and Richard, the, on his wedding day, him and Becky were going to get hooked. And we're going to go get a haircut. And I'm a passenger in in his car. And a lady came out from a side street and hit us. Hit us right on my side, right here like this. And five of my discs on this side were were tore up and and on my neck, five up here. They took me to a pain doctor. Okay? And I was there all day long with this lady, man. And I wanted to get out of there, man. I was, she made pain come on my body. My God. She was a pain in the neck. And she told me this when we were done. She says, I don't know how you're walking. I says, I know how. Jesus! Say Jesus! Jesus! Jesus. Jesus. He's an awesome God. He's almighty. They told me you're going to have to 
have surgery, and, and, and they said, we'll, we'll give you surgery, but you, it'll cost you, take this, 200000 just for the surgery room. And, and they said 250000 for the surgery. Imagine, I, I mean, these guys are crazy. I said, you ain't touching me. I said, I said, no way. And then they said, and every four years, you'll have to come back for a new surgery. I said, I don't need no surgery. What's wrong with you? Jesus is my healer. Yeah. Amen. Give him praise. Give him praise. I can run up and down. I can jump. I can. They, 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 they spoke against God. How did they speak against God? They didn't believe him. They didn't believe him. Wow. I know the Lord. I know he loves me, but... That's not faith. That, 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 you don't have no faith. That's not faith. How, how many of you know you got to have faith in God? Yeah. Look, look at this. Go to Proverbs. Amen. Proverbs. I, I, I want to help you. I want to help you because, because I believe that God wants to lift this church up to be a light like never before. Are, 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 are you with me? How many believe that? How many believe God wants to lift this, this church up? Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 18, 21. Look, look what it says. I want to read to you in the New Century Version, and then we're going to read it in the Amplified. It says, What you say can mean life or death. Those who speak with care will be rewarded. Are you here? Now look at this. In the Amplified it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. Whatever you say, you're going to reap. Is there anybody home? You're either going to believe God and have faith in God and speak on God's behalf, or you're going to help the devil destroy you. You're going to help the enemy keep you down. How many know you don't want to help the enemy keep you down? Say, say this with me. I'm tired of ha- helping the enemy keep me down. I'm getting up. Today I'm getting up. Today this thing is over. Amen. Now, now, now if you write anything down, write this down. And don't lose it. Because you need to remind yourself, listen, stop getting around people that are constantly reminding you of what you're going through. Stop, stop getting around people that are constantly speaking negative to you. Amen. Tell me, if you don't have no faith, don't talk to me. Come on. I, I'd rather not have you talk to me if you can't speak faith to me. Come on, anybody home? I, I, need, I need to hear the answer. I need to hear the answer. I don't, I don't want you to tell me my problem. I know i got a problem. But I want to know, is there, is there an answer to this? Is there a way out of this? And I want to tell you, He is the way maker. He is the one that made the way 2,000 years ago by the blood He shed on the cross. He's the way maker. Anybody home? You know, what causes us to speak foolish, what causes us to speak speak foolish is we carry a lot of excess luggage. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. If you're going to defeat the devil, you can't carry excess luggage. Come on. 
you, you, you can't carry luggage that no longer belongs to you. It, 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 it's, it's over. Your past is over. What you used to be is over. Amen. Uh, what, 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 what you lived is over. What, 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 what the devil tried to make you believe about yourself this morning is over. Right. It, all, all of it is over. It, it's gone. Amen. I, I, I had a lady one day that told me one day, she told me this. She says, Pastor, uh, uh, somebody had died that, that, that they knew. And, and she said, they want me to go to this funeral. I don't want to go to this funeral. She said, because everybody from my past is going to be there. And they're going to remind me of my past and everything. And I looked at her and I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, you know, my past. I said, what past? I said, have you asked God about your past? He said, what do you mean? She says, I said, what I mean to tell you is that you don't have one. Amen. All you have is a future. Amen. You don't have a past. Stop letting people throw your past at you. It's not there. I said, it's not there. That's just the devil using others to try to keep you down. Amen. Come on. Try to keep your mentality down. Oh no, if you're going to give him praise, give him praise. Give Jesus praise. He wiped it all away. He wiped it all away. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Amen. When, when they ask me, have you ever read your book? I tell them no. Why do I want to read it? I says, you, you know what, you know what my, my, my book is good for? I says, you know what my testimony is good for? I says, it's good only, I says, my past is only good to remind me of how good God is. Amen. How powerful, how good He is. And hopefully to help somebody else that's in the mess I was in come out of it. I said, but, but that's all. I says, I don't, I don't want to go back into my past. I want to go into my future. And I want, I, want you to, I want you to grab this. I want you to grab this. I want you to see this. Because you sit there sometimes and, and all, you, 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 all you can visualize, all you can visualize is what you have right now or what you have had in the past. That's all you can visualize. But I want to tell you something. God has a powerful future for you. A mighty future for you. And it's the enemy. Listen, give, give the Lord praise if you're going to give it to Him. And it's the enemy that wants to keep you down and keep you in that mindset. Thinking. Are you with me? That you'll never have anything more than you had in your past or that, or that, or that you have right now. That, that's it. That's all you're ever going to be. And that's all you're ever going to have. And that's a lie. Amen. I'm telling you, that's a lie. Is there anybody home? I believe that the children of God should have the best. You should have more than you got today. Oh, give Him praise! Why? Because you need to be a testimony. You need to be a testimony to the world. There's a world that's hurting out there. There's a world that's in chaos. And they don't know Jesus Christ. And they need to see somebody that was so tore up from the floor up, but that's come out of there. They've come out of Egypt, and now they have a future. Oh, I don't know about you, man, but I, I, I want everything God has. I, I, want, I want my future. I want it all. I want everything God has. Yeah. 
See, and that's why I tell you, you ain't got time. Listen to me. You ain't got time to hang around with turkeys. <laughs> turkeys want to run around down here. Gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> you ain't got time to run around. You ain't got time to run around with crows. Right. Crows want to hang around just and gossip. You don't got time for that. You, listen to me. You don't got time for that. Jesus is coming soon. You got to get going with what he has for you. you, you you're, you're, only, you're only going through the wilderness. You're going to the promised land. Amen. Come on. Is there anybody here? God is moving. Right now the spirit of the Lord is moving in a mighty way. Powerful way. If their minds would have been different, if they would have just grabbed from the beginning, I don't know about you, but if I'd have been there and I, you know what? Imagine Joshua and Caleb. They were part of the old generation. And they were there when the Red Sea parted. And I believe, this is just my thinking, okay? I, I, I put my, my own thought in there. I said, if I'd have been there standing by them and I'd have seen the Red Sea part, I think I'd have thought like them. I'd have said, my God, if God can do this, he can do anything. Right, amen. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He can heal, deliver, prosper. I mean, he can do anything. He can do anything. Our problem is faith. Our problem is believing. Right. And, and it's so simple. It's so simple. It's, it, it's so simple we miss it. So simple. Can, can I show you? Uh, can I show you? Uh, some of you look at me like you're hungry. <laughs> are you hungry for Jesus or are you hungry for, are you hungry for pozole? Go, go with me. Go, go with me. My Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. Look, look at this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what he did. Amen. Okay, what Paul did. Okay? His faith was so powerful. Jesus. Pastor. But you don't understand, Pastor. No, 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 no. It's not me that doesn't understand. I'm trying to get you to understand so you can be blessed. So every time the devil attacks you, you can put him under your feet and say, No, 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 no. You ain't keeping me down like that, devil. I got a future in God. You can't have a you can't have a future in God. You're from the West Side, I say. <laughs> oh, huh? You're from the North Side. <laughs> oh, you can't have a future, man. You you've been in the penitentiary all your life. So what? Look at Joseph. Joseph. Joseph was in prison and he became second in command under Pharaoh. God chooses the foolish things. Foolish things. The foolish things of this world that, that people look at. Uh, they'll, 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 never, <laughs> they'll never amount to nothing. The 
people. <laughs> they could ever do that and all of a sudden they see you. Wow, my God. Council, man. You mean we have a councilman that speaks in tongues? Yeah. <laughs> Brother, man, uh, blow their mind. Huh? Yeah. Brother, we, you, you limit God. You limit God. You put the limits on God by the way you talk and the way you think. You are limiting God from your blessing. You are limiting God from your healing, from your prosperity. You're limiting God. Listen, I can't give. I wish I could give. What do you mean you wish? Just do it. Just do it. The wishing's over. Just do it. Praise God. I'm in the wilderness. Huh? When we were in the world, when we were in the world, man, we gave everything we had. We didn't have anything. We sold our socks. They smelled, but we sold them, man. <laughs> My God. Hello. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, help us, Father. All right, look at this. Yet we have the same spirit of faith. We have, we have, say, I have. The same spirit of faith. The Holy Spirit has put it in you. You have it. You have it. The problem is you just haven't used it. You, you think the problem's bigger. You think the situation is greater. You look at it like an impossibility. Wow, what am I going to do? Look, look. Oh, oh my God. What am I, I don't, you get out to pray and, and you think your prayer, that the, the problem's bigger than your prayer. And so after a while, you have a small God. And that's what the Israelites began to think. Can you imagine after crossing the Red Sea, they thought that God wasn't powerful enough? You have the same spirit of faith. You have the same spirit of faith. You have the same spirit of faith. Don't let nobody tell you you don't. Don't let nobody tell you you can't make it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't prosper. Don't let nobody tell you you cannot be healed. Don't let nobody tell. Come on. Don't let nobody tell you that. Well, pastor, it didn't work the first time. So what? Get up the second time. Yeah. Didn't work the third. Get up again. Come on. Yeah. The, it, it, it was said of Smith Wigglesworth that, that he raised, he raised so, uh, so many people from the dead. And one of them was his wife. And he came home and they said his wife was dead. And he walked up into that room and he picked her up out of the bed, put her up against the wall, and he commanded her to come back to life. And she fell on the ground. He picked her up again. Commanded her to come back to life. She fell on the ground. Commanded her, I think about ten times. And finally she came back to life. Oh, give the Lord praise. See, see our problem is... If it doesn't happen, if it doesn't happen today, if it doesn't happen right now, I don't know what I'm going to do. But this big mountain, this big thing right there, if it doesn't happen, uh, then God's not big enough. No. Sometimes, man, you just got to go right through the thing. Anybody home? Look at this. Look at this. For we have the same spirit of faith as he had, as he had, as he had who wrote, 
Look at this. Who wrote? Somebody wrote something. Somebody wrote something. Look at this. Who wrote, I have believed. I have believed. And therefore have I spoken. Anybody here? Yeah. Uh, we too believe. It says, we too believe. And therefore we speak. Yeah. What, what, what did he... What did he, look at this. Go to Psalms 116, verse 9 and 10. Are you with me this morning? Amen. I said, are you here? Amen. Are you here or did you just come to do a good duty to go to church? Come on. We, we, we got to get out of that religious thing. We got to get into the future. We got to get into letting God be God and let God bless us. Come on. Lift you up out of there. They, 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 if, if you need a job, I'm going to tell you something. When everybody tells you, no, you just, you just can't do it. You just can't have a job. You don't have no D GD. What's a GD? <laughs> well, you know, one of those pieces of paper, tell them, I don't know what that is, but I do know one thing. I know God, and God says, I need a job. Let, let me tell you something. God will make room for you somewhere, and, and, and it don't matter what anybody says, God will give you a job. Yeah. Look at this. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Not, not in the land of the dead. Those right. people that are always right. talking negative and down. You don't hang around with crows nor turkeys. Amen. All right? Now look at verse 10. I believed. This is the psalmist right here. He had been attacked in every, in every way he could think of by the enemy, by people. That they wanted to destroy him in every way they could. But look at this. I believed. I believed. I trusted and, and relied on and clung to my God. He says, and therefore have I spoken. You know what? What was he speaking? God's on my side. God is seeing me through. God is my healer. God is my provider. God is, will prosper me. God will give me a job. Come on, is there anybody here? God will make a way for me. God's saving my children. Come on, God's my deliverer. God, 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 God. He is my everything. I have spoken and I have spoken and I have spoken. The psalmist is speaking that there in the midst of the fiery problems. That are, he's speaking and look at it. He says, and therefore have I spoken. And even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Right in the middle of his problems and troubles, he began to speak faith. He began to speak it, and God helped him. So look, look up here at me. Look at these brown eyes. Look up here. So when the Lord told Paul, when Paul wrote that in Corinthians, Paul was quoting the psalmist. And you know what Paul was saying? Look over here. He said, if God did it for him, God will do it for me. Amen. Hey, come on. Lift up that name. There's no one greater. I'm telling you, there's no one greater. No one. No one. We're the ones. We are the ones that limit him. The way we think is the way we believe. And the way we believe is what stops him. Anybody home? Amen. I want you to stand with me. I want you to bow your head with me. <coughs> Hallelujah. I want you to bow your head, everyone, because you may be here today, and you don't know the Lord. 
you don't know Jesus Christ. You don't know Him as your Lord and Savior. You believe in Him, but you don't know Him. And today I want to give you an opportunity to meet Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you to just simply lift your hand. We want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else that will say, I want Jesus to come into my life. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. Anyone else that will say, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want him to take over my life. I don't want to live this way no more. And as you lifted your hands, I'm going to ask you to do something else. I want to ask you to come and stand right here with me. I want to pray for you. Come and stand right here. Those that lifted their hands, come. Stand right here. Don't be afraid. This is between you and God. God bless you. God bless you, sister. God bless you, buddy. God bless you. God bless you. I want you to extend your hand out this way. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? That will say, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want him to come into my life. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. I'm going to ask you to mean it with all your heart. And as you pray it, Jesus is going to come into your life. And he's going to save you. And he's going to become real to you. Now look at me. By that prayer, you're going to...